Hello and welcome to another SciFest Movie Talk episode. So, 2019 is nearly coming to a close, uh, pretty much imminently, and so I thought as a special episode I would like to give my roundup of those movies released in 2019 that I actually managed to get to see in 2019. Um, either at the cinema or towards the end of the year uh, to watch on Blu-ray um, or 4K. Some I've actually been able to produce SciFest Movie Talk episodes for. Uh, for a number, they're still pending, um, but on the way. Um, and some predate the launch of uh, my SciFest Movie Talk channel, because of course 2019 also saw that happen. Um, but fear not, reviews for these movies will be in the pipeline. So, upon reflection, um, and after checking quite a lot of my cinema stub uh, tickets that I've kept, um, I actually managed to get to see 19 of the movies released in 2019. Um, and I must say, what absolute corker of a year it's been. There's been a number of sagas that have come to a close, um, to come to the conclusions, paving the way for new uh, chapters and producing films uh, that I can only say has, has been almost defining of a generation, or at the very least, the last decade. There were a few family movies that were certainly enjoyed uh, by all, such as the sequel to the Lego movie, the Lego movie 2, the second part, following on from the original movie itself and introducing us to a whole new set of characters um, and the Disney live action remake of Aladdin, uh, which was a fun watch, even if it didn't offer anything new from the original animation. Horror had a few entries also. Um, and I also managed to watch uh, the sequel to Happy um, Happy Death Day, so Happy Death Day to you. Um, follows on directly from the last film. A bit of a disappointment, really, uh, given how much I did enjoy the first movie. And it had a sci-fi twist that I'm not sure worked as well. There was the excellent and disturbing uh, Us by Jordan Peele, examining a dark reality where we are made to come face to face with alternative versions of ourselves. 2019 also saw another entry in the Conjuring universe, Annabelle Comes Home. And whilst not perhaps being as edgy as some of its predecessors, it nonetheless provided a few scares in this take on a haunted house feature and introduced us to some um, of the other cases examined by Ed and um, Lorraine Warren. No doubt to pave the way for further sequels and story branches, well, Here's to hope in any way. Later in the year, we had entries such as Scary Stories to Tell in the Dark, which was an enjoyable cross between adventure and horror from the series of stories by Alvin Swartz. I did actually go into the cinema thinking and believing this was going to be an anthology film, um, but was pleasantly greeted by a more adult and stylish version of Goosebumps. And lastly in horror, uh, we had the conclusion to the remade Stephen King's It saga with It Chapter 2 which saw the now adult versions of the characters uh, we got to know in the first chapter take on Pennywise once again. A reasonable effort, I thought, uh, but I was perhaps expecting more darker horror than we got, especially given the promise of the first uh, in the series. The world of sci-fi, uh, and not counting superhero movies just for the minute, uh, we'll get back to these in a moment, uh, also had a few new interesting entries with the exciting and excellent extravagant Alita Battle Angel, um, the loud and bold Godzilla sequel, Godzilla King of the Monsters, and the next instalment in the Terminator franchise, Terminator Dark Fate, which although introducing us to a new, excellent and scary new Terminator uh, model failed to impress at the box office. So, what nobody I think can deny, regardless of your take on the genre, is that 2019 has been the year of the superhero movie. Big style. With entries from the DC and Marvel universes, we have been provided with a real selection box of movies, which have really flexed the superhero muscle and proved that this genre has no plans to lose steam just yet. From Camp DC, we have the surprise hit Shazam, starring Chuck's Zachary Levi. A very fun and comic book style entry into the DC universe, which provided a welcome break uh, from the dark feel and imposing themes of some of its predecessors. DC also provided us with the runaway hit Joker, trying a new and original take on the origin of the noted supervillain, with Jack and Phoenix in the title, uh, title role. Whilst I myself didn't really know what to make of this film, 
um, it proved a substantial commercial success at the box office. From Camp Marvel, um, well, what can I say? Um, we started the year with Captain Marvel, uh, starring Brie Larson and Samuel, Samuel L. Jackson, uh, serving as an appetizer of things to come. Um, but with a story and a backbone all of its own, and some excellent storytelling and development of its main characters. We then ended the Marvel uh, films for the year with Spider-Man Far From Home, which saw Tom Holland's Spider-Man trekking across Europe with his classmates and proved to be another worthy entry into the, into the saga. So, from Marvel, that of course leaves me with the juggernaut of a movie that was Avengers Endgame. <clears throat> Over 10 years in the making and some 20 plus films and numerous TV series since the conception of the Avengers concept started with the original Iron Man back in 2008, Avengers Endgame saw the epic eye-watering conclusion to what had become known as the Marvel Infinity Saga. The anticipation for this film was like no other film I've ever known in my lifetime. And the resulting movie did not disappoint. I was literally shaking all the way through the movie, um, pretty much. 2019 also saw the deviation of the Fast and the Furious franchise into the surprisingly enjoyable Hobbs and Shaw. I was doubtful about this entry, um, being a very firm Vin Diesel advocate um, with regards to the Fast and Furious series. Um, but yeah, I, I was turned when watching this um, and thoroughly enjoyed it. With lots of extreme fast-paced action and outrageous action that fans of the franchise have come to love, um, the series continued in safe hands uh, with this entry. To put us all in a festive mood, uh, we had the romantic comedy also last Christmas from director Paul Feig. Enjoyable date night Christmas fair. We also had Knives Out, um, a modern twist on the classic murder mystery whodunit genre, uh, with some unexpected twists and turns, and with a stellar cast. And lastly, from my own personal watch list, and a late entry given that I only watched it the other night, um, we had the latest instalment in the Star Wars story, and the supposed um, Enter the Main Skywalker Saga. Star Wars Part 9, The Rise of Skywalker. It certainly didn't disappoint. Um, what an epic display, um, and the final battle sequence, well, wow, superb. With each instalment and element bringing a tear to my eye, it really did, and each trying to outdo the last. An absolutely fantastic way to round off what shaped up to be an absolutely incredible year for film. Well, that was what I watched in 2019 anyway, um, from those films released in 2019. Unfortunately, there never seems to be enough time, um, and all that I got to see all of those great films, I still never managed to see all I wanted to uh, throughout the year, which, given some of the titles I missed, is a shame, dependent on uh, your point of view, but I certainly look forward to catching up um, over the course of 2020 as the titles are released onto Blu-ray. So, that brings me to the end of this episode. Um, many thanks for watching. If you like my reviews and general movie discussions, please do hit that subscribe button, Please do leave a like on this page and any other on my channel. And please feel free to leave comments um, and discussions as you like. Um, especially if you have any ideas for upcoming SciFest Movie Talk episodes and films you would like me to see. Thank you for watching and on this very special occasion I hope you all have a fantastic new year.